and Small Noise trying to send text messages between um, Motorola and the Hyteria radio, um, and you can't, you couldn't, you couldn't do it basically because um, I wasn't really expecting it because I think uh, Motorola use a proprietary um, uh, kind of format for their text messages, and Hyteria, uh, I think it's, I think it's the same with Hyteria, um, but. Um, doing a bit more reading, I found that if you update the firmware um, for this particular radio, which is the SL4000, and you update the CPS to, to a latest version as well, um, then what it allows you to do in the CPS for the Motorola, it allows you to select um, per channel whether you want a, a Motorola proprietary format text message or whether you want a, um, a DMR standard tier 2 um, you know, to the standard specification, which is quite interesting. Um, so what I did, I selected um, in the CPS, I selected for the Motorola after doing the firmware update and everything else, um, I managed to select the uh, the DMR standard um, and, and DMR standard compression. So when you, if you try it, if you, if you get, get, you know, that far and I want to try it, you've got to make sure that you have DMR standard for the text message and also... Um, you know your compression needs to be DMR standard as well. Now I have got the CPS open here actually so I can show you. Um, here we go. So compressed UDP data header DMR standard and text message type DMR standard. Now that is in the Motorola CPS um, and the version that I'm using here is 11.2 um, build 604. Um, so that's that's what that is. Um, but yeah, just make sure you set those two to DMR standard. Now, when I tried it this morning, it still didn't work. It still wasn't sending to the um, to the high tier. So then it, I thought, oh, I wonder if there's an update for the um, for the high tier. So I checked my high tier. Despite being a brand new radio, it was shipping with um, firmware five. So we're on firmware seven now. Um, and obviously, I've just you know shown part of the video to um, you know showing showing what I did with that process. Um, and um, the first thing I noticed was, lo and behold, when you go into messages here, and you go sent messages, and then I send a message, so resends, and there you go, straight from the Motorola to the Hyteria. And you view that, it comes straight across. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, I'm glad that's working now. Um, so now we've got complete cross compatibility between two radios. Um, I don't know how the rest of it, I mean, I think everyone will, is going to have to either decide what standard they want to use, um, and I'm not sure how it's going to work with repeaters either. It may need to be, you know, uh, for, for amateur radio anyway, it's going to need to sort of take some standardisation to work out, you know, what the, what the standard is going to be. Um, I mean, ideally it would be DMR standard because then everything will talk to everything. Um, but that's very nice. So... I haven't tried it the other way around. I can do that um, right now and see what um, what happens. Now, by the looks of things, we might. I think we may have a few more options in here. I'm pretty sure. Um, I've not done text messaging on this before. Let's try a quick text and just say hello back. Confirm. Send. Send a message. And we've got. Uh, nothing coming back the other way. So, it doesn't appear to be working that way around. Um, <laughs> so I probably should have checked that first. Right, continuing the madness, the mad half hour of trying to work out these, um, these text messages between the two radios. Um, I've managed to figure it out. Basically, in the Hytera CPS now, we have to select um, conventional, digital, common, basic, and then here we have a section that's called um, data bearer service here. Now that was previously set to Hytera defined data. So there's your proprietary Hytera setting for the data. If we flip that to compressed IP, <coughs> then what happens is it then allows um, the <coughs> motor turbo radio, the SL4000, um, to basically receive a text message from the Hytera. Um, so let's go down to here, 
send your message, and yeah, it said send success, so you've got a delivery report. Um, and there you go, it comes across. So there you go, we've got two-way messaging between Motorola and Hytera, got there in the end. So yeah, just a, just a reminder, um, on what's interesting is what I did with the Hytera, I updated the firmware, um, and then I extracted the code plug, because it retained the original code plug, so I, I extracted the code plug once again back into the to the um, CPS software, and magically all of the other options appeared. Um, things like data bearer service also, um, which is quite interesting, is um, if we go to general settings, okay, get my mouse in the right place. Um, uh, not this one. Accessories I wanted. Basically. GPS compression appears as well in there. Now that is a requirement to turn that off for um, for GPS on uh, Hytera networks. If you want GPS forwarded to APIs, that's another subject. But there is a useful bit of information online about that. Um, but yeah, that's quite interesting. Anyway, um, you know, so make sure to update your CPS software and your firmware um, on your Hytera radio, and then you'll get. You know, you'll get the full latest um, features which allow you to, you know, cross text message between Motorola and Hytera. So, yeah, any questions again? Um, sorry for the, 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 the cut and shut videos, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's quite interesting to see how that worked anyway. Um, and any questions, just leave them in the comments. Cheers for now.